evening. Over in America, the summer blockbuster season started early with Twister, an everyday story of tornado watching, which in only 10 days sucked up a record-breaking $100 million in its gratifyingly destructive path. The stars of this movie are not the human actors, but the digitally created tornadoes, a billion megabytes of high-octane energy seamlessly incorporated into the frame by the same technical magicians who morphed the bad guy in Terminator 2 and sent raptors stampeding through Jurassic Park. Just as you'd expect with Jan's speed de bont helming the live action sequences, the camera never stopped moving, which made the task of designing over 300 special effect matte shots monumentally difficult. So join us on a roller coaster ride while we show you who and what are behind Twister's whirlwind success. Go, come on! Get in the ground! Take that right now! Go! I really wanted to make a movie and show that you could make a movie that is really exciting and thrilling without having to uh, rely on machine guns and explosions and blood and killing many, many people. I think these days Hollywood is, uh, and probably ever since Jaws, um, is in a perennial search for a great natural villain, something that does stir up uh, primal fears, and uh, every so often they find it. I mean, Jaws certainly did it, and Jurassic Park is the most recent uh, you know, monster example of that. And uh, Twister works because it's inhuman, and it's something that can't be controlled. It's a force of God, and unlike any tornado you've ever seen in a, in a film before, uh, this is utterly, utterly convincing, and so it does give you that genuine kind of thrill and a genuine ride. Oh my God. We really wanted to shoot it very much in the style of a documentary that it had to be rough and dirty and quick cuts and just sort of really with a lot of excitement in it that, it, that we really wanted those shots to not look staged, but just if somebody had really just come along there with a the camera. We looked at uh, hundreds of tapes because we had to find at least samples of what it more or less could be like. And we picked like I think six or seven different tornadoes. Like this is for number one, the magical one, then a little bit more destructive, the scary one. We really had concerns in initial, initial meetings is okay, what do we do when we just have sunny weather for the three months that we're out there? And so initially we had planned on doing some replacement of the sky in the clouds, but it turned out that we probably did so in large percentage, I would say up to 90 percentage of our shots, is replacing all the cloud structures because tornadoes just drop from very specific cloud structures. What we're looking at right now is the background plates for ID1. And um, uh, the director, when he shot it, um, envisioned the tornado um, approaching the ditch and then suddenly turning and coming toward them, which put them in a dangerous situation. The challenge for us in this shot was that the, the sky was very bright, not the type of sky you'd normally have a, a tornado in, so we had to replace the entire sky. Her hair was flying all around, which made the matting incredibly difficult, and the camera is, uh, uh, got a lot of shake to it. So this uh, turned out to be a fairly challenging shot. I really had to plan for the tornadoes to be like, you know, not only 
a menacing, you know, villain, it really had to become a character because it, you know, they, our actors are almost talking to them. And they talk about it all the way, all the time as a third person. Of course, we could not uh, really uh, duplicate a real tornado, but what we could do is uh, at least we could generate a lot of wind. You know, we had jet engines there, and they could create winds of uh, up to 80, 90 miles an hour. I had hoped we could also generate like some of the dust and the debris, and the debris was kind of okay to deal with, so the dust became very quickly totally impossible. I mean, the actors couldn't breathe, we couldn't work in it, you couldn't see each other, and, and, and so we had to kind of eliminated them, you had to do it all later in post. And, and all the dust you see in the movie is basically all post, it's all generated dust. I think the breakthrough in, in terms of uh, our CG technology was very much our control over particles. First of all, how to animate them, but then also to light them very realistically. Because there's this fine line of, of going smoky and getting that sort of smoky quality in there on the dust, but then the core itself had to look like it was really a volume of of matter that was spinning around and it had to properly react with light. With CGI you can do a lot of things but it's very hard to really have a big heavy object you know collide with the ground and have it seen interact and that interaction you have to do on camera because there's nothing better than reality obviously and and to do that we had to really make our own tractors and combiners and get those big heavy duty um, helicopters and drop them from the sky. And I wanted to be, you know, default, really close to camera. Well, good luck, you know, it was like one little mistake or, you know, and, and the thing could drop on the truck. There were times during the making of Twist that I said, oh, man, I, I, I want to go home. <laughs> it was so hard, it was so difficult. And, and we had so much trouble, you know. We had so much trouble with the weather and, and with the effects and, 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 and things kept going wrong. And when you have a crew of 350 people that you have to move the whole time and motivate and, and, and they get soaking wet every day because it's pouring rain. And, it's really hard to keep them motivated, let me tell you that. Okay, but this is a better speed. Let's just do it and see if we can prevent that yeah. little stop. Yeah, and that's it. Jan is a phenomenal shooter. I mean, he moves faster than any person on the crew. So it becomes really a job of keeping up. And Jan is usually running, placing every camera himself. He works with multiple cameras on every single shot so that you have a very fast cutting quick moving energy to every single scene in the movie. It's also like a fairy tale type story. It is, you know, it's the big monster coming out of the sky, you know, it is the Wizard of Oz. It is, you know, imagination, because quite often there's quite a few scenes where you, you don't see anything, and it's very scary. You imagine the fear, you imagine what could have happened or might have happened. And I think, and then when you finally see it and you get confronted with, with, with you know, like a, a front row seat of the, of the magic, the, the beauty and the force of a real tornado, I think it's spectacular. Yeah.